Before we start this video, I just wanted to mention that only 16% of you are subscribed. So if you enjoy the content, please hit the subscribe button. Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing the five most powerful witches and wizards that came from Gryffindor House at Hogwarts. In the last video, we discussed Slytherin, and you guys seem to enjoy it, so I'm going to be making one of these videos for each of the four houses. Now, of the four houses, with those who are destined to be Slytherins aside, Gryffindor is seemingly the house that many people want to be in. Sure, it's not for everyone, but in a weird way, it's sort of the popular house that gets all of the glory. In McGonagall's own words, though she might be biased, having been a Gryffindor herself, the house of Godric Gryffindor has commanded the respect of the wizarding world for nearly 10 centuries. Many of the other houses over the years have speculated that Gryffindor has received favouritism from the Hogwarts staff. However, despite their differences with Gryffindor, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw have also always been on the side of Gryffindor in the ongoing rivalry between Slytherin and Gryffindor. The Sorting Hat describes the criteria for Gryffindor as follows. You might belong in Gryffindor, where dwell the brave at heart. Their daring nerve and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. In short, what this basically means is that the defining characteristic of a Gryffindor is courage or bravery. Hogwarts had four founders, Rowena Ravenclaw, Salazar Slytherin, Helga Hufflepuff, and Godric Gryffindor. Each of the four founders formed their very own house at the school, and Gryffindor House was of course founded by Godric. After founding the school, the four founders encountered a bit of a dilemma when it occurred to them that they would have to figure out a way to sort students by house when they were no longer alive. However, this dilemma was short-lived as Godric Gryffindor quickly provided a solution to their problem. Godric pulled his completely normal hat off of his head and made the suggestion to the other founders that, using their collective magic, they enchant the hat and turn it into a sentient being. The four founders of Hogwarts recognised that they each valued very different virtues, virtues which ended up leading to the defining attributes of each house. It was important to them that the houses they founded would continue to follow by the beliefs from which they were based. These virtues, or inherent characteristics, can be summed up in the Sorting Hat's own words. By Gryffindor, the bravest were, prized far beyond the rest. For Ravenclaw, the cleverest, would always be the best. For Hufflepuff, hard workers were, most worthy of admission, and power-hungry Slytherin loved those of great ambition. There it is again, prized far beyond the rest. Oh boy. After the students place the hat on their head, it begins to analyse their mind, and places them in a house based on how closely they resemble one of the four founders. In the same way that becoming evil is not a defining characteristic of Slytherin, being arrogant is not a defining characteristic of a Gryffindor, and this is the reputation that they seem to get. Like Slytherin, Gryffindor House has produced some of the greatest and most powerful wizards that the world has ever seen. One of the reasons that Gryffindor students and Slytherin students have such a seemingly embedded rivalry is because Hogwarts founders Godric Gryffindor and Salazar Slytherin had a falling out over Slytherin's emphasis on blood purity. Despite their courageous reputation, some feel that their courage is mainly exercised by engaging in pointless heroics, and Severus Snape always found Gryffindors to be self-righteous and arrogant, though he could just be saying this because he disliked the Marauders. The top 5 list for Gryffindor was actually much harder to produce than the list for Slytherin, as I feel that there are many witches and wizards from Gryffindor House that are quite comparable in terms of power. There are also some characters that I feel like should be in Gryffindor, but we just don't have any proof to support it, i.e. Rufus Scrimger. He was such a powerful wizard, and if he was a Gryffindor, which he might have been, he definitely would have made this list, though I know that some feel he was more of a Slytherin. Maybe that's a topic for another video. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the five most powerful Gryffindors to have ever lived, at least the ones that we know about. Number five, Sirius Black. First of all, let me start off by saying that it was really hard for me to decide between Remus and Sirius for this position on the list. They grew up together and are both particularly powerful wizards in their own right. Remus has the added threat of being able to transform into a werewolf, but I think that Sirius, and this is just my opinion, is a slightly more powerful one out of the pair. We know Sirius Black as the godfather of Harry Potter and one of the Marauders. Sirius started at Hogwarts in the year 1971, the same year that Peter Pettigrew, Remus Lupin, and James Potter began attending the school. The quartet of boys would eventually form a group called the Marauders, and one thing that they all had in common was that they were all Gryffindors. 
The marauders were hellbent on breaking the rules at the school and were notorious for their rule breaking and mischief making. Though they were mischief makers, they were all very magically talented and Sirius ended up becoming an Animagus at the ripe age of 15. An extremely impressive feat. His Animagus form is a black dog and it was by transforming into his Animagus form that he was able to escape through the bars at Azkaban. Sirius hailed from the powerful wizarding family, the Blacks, and while many of his family members placed an unreasonable amount of value on blood purity, Sirius did not share this same belief. Many of the members of the Black family went down a very dark path. Sirius' cousin Bellatrix the Strange is a great example of this. Sirius didn't want his lineage to determine the man that he would become, and once wisely said, we've all got both light and dark inside us. What matters is the part we choose to act on, that's who we really are. While his magical development was somewhat stunted by the extensive amount of time he spent in Azkaban, he still ended up being a supremely powerful wizard. In addition to becoming an Animagus, Sirius was skilled at transfiguration in general. Not only that, but he was also skilled at brewing potions, producing charms, producing non-verbal magic, and occlumency. Sirius met his demise at the hands of his cousin Bellatrix, but she's one of the most powerful witches to have ever lived, so it's not like he went down easy. Number 4. Peter Pettigrew I know what you're thinking, Peter Pettigrew? How is he on this list? Just hear me out. Peter Pettigrew, also known as Wormtail, was a British pureblood wizard born in 1959. He had pale skin, unhealthy hair, and blue eyes. To most, he was considered to be a snivelling excuse for a man whose loyalties only lay where there was power. But in his younger years, he did sort of have friends, and was one of the members of the Marauders, along with Sirius, Remus, and James. Pettigrew, like Sirius, successfully became an Animagus at a very young age, and although it took Pettigrew longer than Sirius, it doesn't automatically mean that Sirius was a more gifted wizard. Many witches and wizards, as well as fans of the series, automatically write off Pettigrew's magical capabilities due to his appearance and meek demeanour. However, the truth is that Pettigrew was a talented wizard. He was also just equally mentally weak and quite impressionable. Pettigrew didn't perform well at school, but it seemed like during his time at school, he was more focused on just causing trouble with his friends. Additionally, some people just struggle in their younger years and go on to accomplish greater and more impressive things once they've gotten a little bit older. I think that Pettigrew fits this category perfectly. In addition to becoming an Animagus, which is an advanced form of transfiguration, Pettigrew was also versed in Conjuration, another extremely advanced branch of transfiguration. Conjuration, which allows individuals to transfigure an object out of thin air, was only taught to talented students at the newt level. He could also brew highly advanced potions. Under the instruction of Lord Voldemort, he successfully helped to produce both the rudimentary body potion and regeneration potion. He also, along with Barty Crouch Jr., produced a polyjuice potion, which is very involved. Though I don't necessarily believe that Pettigrew is much more powerful than Sirius or Remus with regards to conventional forms of magic, I do think that he is much more versed in the dark arts as neither Sirius nor Remus had much experience with the dark arts. Pettigrew could easily and successfully cast Avada Kedavra, which requires extreme concentration. Additionally, in 1981, the same year that Pettigrew framed Sirius for the death of 12 muggles, he utilized a dark, advanced, and powerful blasting curse. The curse was strong enough to murder 12 people, destroy hundreds of feet of sewer system, and leave a 40-foot crater in the ground. Because he had such a broad wizarding arsenal, I think that he is deserving of the number 4 spot on this list. Number 3. Minerva McGonagall Minerva McGonagall is a Scottish half-blood witch that attended the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and later worked there. While she attended the school, she was the most talented student of her entire year and she achieved top grades in her newts and owls. She exhibited extreme magical prowess from a very young age and later became one of Hogwarts' best professors. McGonagall's most notable skill is perhaps related to her knowledge and talent in transfiguration. She is known for her effortless ability to transform her physical form at will. McGonagall was extremely proficient at transfiguration very early on, and she became an Animagus at a very young age. She later became head of transfiguration at Hogwarts, a position that she took very seriously as she believed transfiguration to be one of the most complex and dangerous forms of magic taught at the school. She was also highly proficient at casting a wide variety of charms and mastered the Patronus charm in both corporeal and incorporeal forms when she was still very young. She was also a skilled potion maker, able to successfully brew an Animagus potion and duelist. 
notably dueling Lord Voldemort to a standstill alongside Slughorn and Kingsley. But what makes McGonagall particularly powerful is her paired knowledge of the dark arts. Not only did she master charms, transfiguration, dueling, and potion making, she also had a vast knowledge of the dark arts. Though she didn't use dark spells frequently, she could use them when necessary, and notably used the Imperious Curse on Amicus Cara. Number 2. Godric Gryffindor We don't actually have a lot of information on Godric Gryffindor, but we know that the founders of Hogwarts, all four of them, were immensely powerful. The Hogwarts founders are widely thought to have possessed power that was entirely uncomparable to most modern day witches and wizards. Godric was a tall, muscular man with a lion-like mane of hair. This is representative of the Gryffindor crest, which contains a lion. Gryffindor was unusual as a wizard in that he would often duel with a sword rather than a wand. This was to give people a fighting chance. He was also an extremely impressive swordsman, and his sword, the Sword of Gryffindor, is massively important in this series. Godric was also a charms master, and along with the other three founders, helped him enchant the Sorting Hat effectively turning it into a sentient being. Funnily enough, it was actually his hat to begin with. Like I said before, we just don't have a lot of information on the man, but I still think that I can confidently place him this high up in the list, because time and time again, the founders have been referenced as exceedingly powerful. Rowling herself said that Gryffindor was the most accomplished jeweler of his time. Number 1. Dumbledore Now, I'm sure you saw this coming. Dumbledore is undoubtedly the most powerful wizard to have ever lived, comparable only to maybe Voldemort or possibly Grindelwald. While at school, Dumbledore's magical abilities consistently turn heads, particularly his skills surrounding charms and transfiguration. He also did exceptionally well on his newts and Griselda Marchbanks, a professor working for the Wizarding Examinations Authority, remarked that Albus was able to do things with a wand that she had never seen before. In addition to being a charms and transfiguration master, Dumbledore was also an expert practitioner of elemental magic. Over the course of the books and films, he's really shown us what he's capable of, and in his duel against Voldemort in the Ministry Atrium, we see his elemental expertise shine through when he creates some sort of complicated, hydrokinetic spell. I think that his most impressive display of magic, period, was when he produced Firestorm to ward off the Inferi. Firestorm produces a large ring of fire from the caster's wand, and from this ring, the caster is able to shoot jets or balls of fire at opponents. There truly isn't a subject or area of magic where Dumbledore is lacking, and he's truly a master in transfiguration, charms, potions, elemental magic, occlumency, and more. He is the exception to the phrase, jack of all trades, master of none, as he was truly a jack of all trades, master of all. And that's it for this list. Honourable mentions include Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, Remus Lupin, and James Potter. This is not to say that there aren't other powerful Gryffindors, these are just the ones that nearly made the list. What do you guys think? Who are your top 5? Let me know down in the comments section below. Until next time, you're Wizard Harry! <laughs>